The increasingly open trading environment built on the internet presents companies with many opportunities and challenges. Rapid response is key to generating operational efficiencies, avoiding customer churn, and providing a positive end user experience. The ability to control and monitor access to online services and enforce service level agreements is mission critical. In this open web based world, companies need to have confidence and trust in the security framework underpinning every commercial exchange. And Vordell addresses all these concerns. Our products accelerate, manage and protect services across corporate networks and cloud computing environments to enable companies govern service usage and ensure optimized service performance. Welcome to the screencast of Service Virtualization with the Vordell XML Gateway. In this screencast, we'll first show the normal situation where a client connects to a web service. The client pulls down WSDL so that it can understand what type of message to send to the web service. The client we're using is the Vordell Soapbox. This ships from Vordell.com and also with Vordell's XML gateways. Soapbox is pre-configured with sample requests that connect to publicly available web services. Here we see Soapbox connect to a public web service and we see the message it sends and the response that comes back. With the response, you can drill into the tree view of the XML to see its different parts. We're going to use Soapbox to send a message to an Apache Access web service. Apache Access displays its WSDL here in a browser. We click on the stock quote service. We're then displayed the WSDL for that particular service, which shows how to connect to the service, what type of messages to connect, and the address of the service. Down at the bottom we see the binding information which shows the address. In the middle we see information about the data types and the messages to send to the web service. We're going to copy the address of the web service so that we can then paste that into Soapbox. We load the WSDL in Soapbox, paste in the WSDL, and then Soapbox goes to the web service, pulls down the WSDL, and displays a list of the web services that are available from it. In the list, which we will see, we see the get price service is what we're interested in running. We select that, we press finish, and Soapbox then creates a sample message to send to that web service. We can see that in the middle soap request pane. Now we're going to press send request so that we send that to the web service. That goes to the Apache Access web service. We can choose to send it over SSL. In this case we send it direct and we see the response come back can drill into it, see the return message that comes back, and we see the return value is 42 from it. Now we're going to introduce the XML gateway. Up to now we've seen the Vordell Soapbox client connect to the Apache Access web services. The XML gateway goes in between the client and the web service. The client connects to the XML gateway, then the XML gateway connects to the web services on the client's behalf. The Vordell Policy Studio is what's used to create the policies that run on the XML Gateway. We connect the Policy Studio to the XML Gateway by entering the username password and the passphrase if required in order to connect to the XML Gateway. Policy Studio then pulls down the configuration and it creates a graphical representation of the policies and the filters which are part of the policies. And this allows us to edit existing policies or create new policies for the web service which the XML gateway is virtualizing. We see now the user interface for Policy Studio which consists of a tree view on the left hand side which shows the web services that are available and the policies that apply to them. In our web service repository when it's first installed there are no web services so we're going to import the WSDL. The same way as with Soapbox we paste in the address of the whistle, the Policy Studio connects, gets a list of the operations, and again we're interested in the get prize operation. We click next, and then we have the option to remove the other operations from the whistle. We're not going to do that right now because we may use those op other operations later. We apply the service to the root of the XML gateway, so people will connect to it by its default port, which can be changed if, if required. The XML Gateway now creates the policies for the web service. We'll see it creates more than one because it segments them out into different parts. It successfully created the policies, so now we can go in and look at the policies that have been created at the Policy Studio. We also see that it's imported its own WSDL, and the WSDL is what's exposed down to the client. So the client connects to the WSDL at the Gateway, which provides a virtual service. 
it also has imported the XML schema that's part of the WSDL, so we will be using that as part of the policy automatically to validate that the messages of the right type and the data types are corrected in the message including strings and tools. When we look at the policies, we see that it created a root policy where it's checking the client requests in the WSDL. If they are, we return them the WSDL, which we've just seen. If not, we're going to go and run a sub-policy as a policy shortcut. When we view that, we can see what it's doing. Is it making sure it's the right path coming in, the right sub in, the right method, and that it matches the schema, which has already been automatically imported. So you see that the policy for the stock road service actually consists of three policies making use of the policy shortcut mechanism. You'll notice there's a policy library that chips by default with the XML gateway and it includes an XML thread policy which consists of a number of filters that block common XML threads including messages that are large and that have threatening content. Moving back to the policies for the stock road service, let's look at the routing policy where we're going to set the routing to connect to the web service itself. We see that that's called last of all and it sets the address for the web service and then it connects to the destination. Now we're going to look back at our overall diagram of how the client connects to the XML gateway. You can see the client uses WSDL in order to know what services are available to the gateway. These are the virtualized services that the XML gateway is presenting to the client. Within the XML gateway, you can see that it's listening on port 8080 and then the stock quote service is checking to see is the client connecting on a particular path slash access slash services slash stock quote service. We're going to set a, a path at the gateway itself so that all traffic coming into that particular path runs that policy. We paste it in as a relevant path and we choose that it's going to run the policy for the stock quote service. So now you can see that particular path is mapped to the policy for stock quote service. This means that we no longer need to check the relevant path within the policy so we can delete that and we right click on the start and we say set a start so the first thing it does is it checks the SOAP action is correct. We see that it's colored red until you choose the policy which runs it and then it shows it in black indicating it is getting the input that it requires and will successfully run as part of that policy. Stock quote service policy checks is a WSDL request. If it is, it returns the WSDL to the client. We see is the client requesting the WSDL by checking his WSDL in the path. We're also checking if the SOAP message comes in, is it the right method? Is it the right SOAP action? And finally, does it match the schema which we've already imported via the WSDL? What we have to do now is to refresh the gateway so that it gets the new policies which we have changed. We do that by going up to the root, pressing F5, and then choosing to refresh the XML gateway.